Hello, I'm David Hayward and in this video I'm inviting you to consider one of the most important questions for the Church in the 21st century. What does it mean to practice Christian faith in this post-Christendom age? There are several different elements in Christian discipleship. They include the things that we believe as Christians, going to church, our habits of prayer, and perhaps serving the community in some way. Before we go on to think about why this matters, I'm going to look briefly at eight different aspects of what it means to be a Christian. Some of them overlap with each other, but each can be considered important in its own right as an element of Christian practice. You might like to consider which are most and least important in your own practice of faith. Let's begin with the aspect of Christian practice that defines us for most people in our society, going to church. We can see how important this is by the fact that as soon as churches closed during the lockdown of 2020, dioceses and many individual churches acted immediately to provide an online substitute for Sunday worship. For many, especially the older generation, church going has been at the centre of faith. And we can expand church going to include a number of other religious practices that are important to many people, such as regular communion, keeping Lent, or for some, cathedral worship. Then there are Christian beliefs. For some churches and individuals, the definition of a Christian is someone who believes all the right things about the Trinity, about Jesus, sin and atonement, the resurrection, and who follows Christian moral teachings. On the other hand, for some Christians, understanding doctrine is not at all important. They're content to leave that to the experts, and they are more likely to take their lead on moral issues from wider society. So how important is doctrinal belief as part of your faith? Thirdly, there is the church as institution. Along with regular church going, this is probably the most visible aspect of Christian faith for those who are not Christians. On a national scale, royal weddings figure largely in people's perceptions of the church, and for some the role of bishops in the House of Lords. At a local level, we are aware of how important church buildings can be to many who seldom attend worship. One of the church wardens in my first parish had been recruited by a former vicar to help repair and refurbish the church. His role as church warden was actually the centre of his faith. The fourth aspect of Christian practice is the way in which we nurture and deepen our relationship with God through prayer and Bible study, perhaps also through retreats and spiritual direction. Religious practices, doctrinal belief, the church as institution, and nurturing our relationship with God. These are perhaps the most widely recognised elements in Christian practice, but there are others. For some people, the centre of their faith lies in their relationships with fellow Christians. The discovery of a loving community in which to belong, whether they're small group, youth fellowship, or leadership team. Many have been drawn into Christian faith through experiencing the love of Jesus in the relationships between Christians. So I suggest that Christian fellowship or face-to-face -face community is an important element in the experience of many Christians today. For others, spiritual experience is what floats their boat, whether high energy charismatic or contemplative worship. For some Christians, regular attendance at Teze, New Wine, Spring Harvest or some other festival is what keeps them going and might even form the centre of their Christian practice. Increasing numbers are looking for retreats or pilgrimages. Then there is the desire to make a difference, to feed the hungry at home or overseas, to serve their community or the wider world in some way. Their faith is closely linked with one or more major issue like climate change. And this is where they sense God calling them to serve. In serving this way, they may be finding in Christian faith the route 
to a better self. And finally, there is wisdom for living. Christian faith as a sure guide to the big issues of life and the details of daily living. Their Christian practice includes keeping Sabbath in the face of an over busy world. Or they have found careful stewardship of their money a bulwark against the constant pressure to spend. In a society that treats sex as a commodity, they have opted for fidelity in sexual relationships. Or they have discovered the freedom and wholeness that comes with the practice of forgiveness. The emphasis in this eighth aspect of Christian practice is on Christianity as a way of life, a source of coherent identity in a world in which many live increasingly fragmented lives, a source of healing for the pain that most of us carry, and a source of wholesome teaching for parents seeking to bring up children in the right way. Christian religious practices, Christian beliefs, the church as institution, nurturing our relationship with God, face-to-face -face community, spiritual experience, making a difference, and Christianity as wisdom for living. Which of these eight aspects of Christian faith are most important for you? Let me invite you to pause the video to think about this. You might imagine that you have 50 points to divide between them. How many would you allocate to each? Do you sense that one or more of these aspects actually forms the centre of your practice of faith, with the others revolving around it? Why does this matter? I want to suggest that one major reason is that we live in what has been called a post-Christendom age. The role of the church and Christian faith in society has fundamentally changed. So it's important to consider whether those elements of Christian practice that sustained the church in previous generations are capable of doing so today. If we look at my own church, the Church of England, it might be said that its official definition of Christianity is a combination of the first three aspects. When clergy are ordained or licensed to a parish, they have to make three declarations. That they believe Christian doctrine, that they will be loyal to the institution, and that they will stick to the officially sanctioned services. Religious practice, Christian belief, and the institution are at the centre. But these three elements in Christian practice are proving insufficient for many Christians. In his book, The Invisible Church, Steve Aisthorpe records the outcome of interviews with 800 Christians who have given up on church. Many of them have occupied positions of leadership and spent thousands of hours helping to keep the regular round of services going. But they've come to the realisation that they no longer find these sustaining and life-giving. Most of those who have left have reached out to other church leavers so as not to lose the element of face-to-face -face community. And a significant proportion left their church to engage in mission. They saw that the opportunities were there, but the church was failing to respond. So they decided that making a difference in their communities was more important than the regular round of religious practices. Many Christians are outgrowing and moving away from the elements of Christian practice that, that, that have sustained the life of the church up to now. What about those who do not profess Christian faith or have moved away from it entirely? For our society, the definition of a Christian is someone who goes to church. But the practice of going to church, the doctrines of Christianity and the church as institution make no sense to them. For them, they belong to an era that is past. For almost anyone under the age of 50, it is the other elements of Christian practice that are more likely to connect. Face-to-face -face community in which to love and be loved. The opportunity to join with others in making a positive difference. Christianity as a wisdom for living, for those who sense the hollowness of contemporary culture. And for some, the spiritual seekers, 
the opportunity to connect with God, whether through high energy festival worship or in the silence of contemplation. I'm suggesting that one of our greatest challenges is to recontextualise Christian faith for a new era. To reconsider which of the elements of Christian practice that I've listed are really most important. Which of them define what it means to be a Christian in the 21st century? In the old Christendom pattern, religious practices have been central, with everything else revolving around this. Christians are people who go to church. What I'm suggesting is that in our post-Christendom age, discipleship should move to the centre of our thinking and our practice. I'm not suggesting that going to church or doctrinal beliefs should become optional extras. Rather, that it's time for the elements of Christian practice, which up to now the church has treated as optional extras, nurturing our relationship with God, Christian fellowship, service in the community, and Christianity as wisdom for living, should move to the centre. In the New Testament, Christianity was known as the way. Is it time to recover Christian faith as first and foremost a way of life?